Georgia, way, way outside of Atlanta. Now, you might be wondering what I'm doing here. Well, I'm working and I'm relaxing and I'm working and I'm relaxing, but I took time out to not uh, shoot hoops. My jumper is not the greatest. But I want to talk to you about Paul versus Clinton. You might say, what's that? All right, we know about Norm Sue and you know about the uh, $850,000 that he wound up uh, laundering through various donors to the Clintons and how, uh, well actually to Senator Hillary Clinton's uh, presidential campaign and how the Clinton staff is in the process of giving it back. But what you don't know about, more than likely, is the case, a near eight-year-old case of Peter Paul versus Hillary Clinton. Now, who is Peter Paul? Peter Paul, in 2000, was a Hollywood entrepreneur and, as they say, mogul, who bankrolled $1.6 million of his own money to finance what was then the largest party fundraiser ever held for a candidate. In this case, it was for Senator Clinton's then run for the New York Senate. To make a long story short, and there's a lot of uh, detail that I'm going to introduce you to through links and uh, encourage you to do some of your own research, uh, Peter Paul worked to befriend Bill Clinton for the purpose of bringing him in to the then new Stan Lee media. You know Stan Lee who uh, created the Spider-Man character and the Incredible Hulk and some would say is a character himself. Well, he had joined with Peter Paul to create Stan Lee media and they wanted to bring in Bill Clinton as a rainmaker, particularly overseas in Japan. They had a Japanese investor that had uh, pledged a lot of his own money on the idea that uh, and the eventual securing of Bill Clinton as a rainmaker for Stanley Media. All right, this is what happened. Just after this huge gala where Stanley was the uh, master of ceremonies and Cher sang and Olivia New John and others attended, uh, just about three days after it was reported in the Washington Post that, well, Peter Paul was a felon. Specifically, he had defrauded, of all people, Fidel Castro of $8.7 million in something called the Cuban Coffee Caper. Uh, and as part of that process, apparently he had uh, somehow uh, shifted a bag of cocaine. and Peter Klain says that it was a uh, operation that he was involved in with the government and actually had was in the process of uh, secure, trying to secure a pardon uh, through the Clintons uh, by this time. But what happened was that when the Clintons found, the Clintons had already known about it. Peter Paul told Hilly about this and one of the fundraisers he held for her, I believe at Spago. But it wasn't a matter of public record until this Washington Post article. Again, this was in 2000. Well, the Clintons started publicly distancing themselves from Peter Paul, but privately, they were all friends. They were sending letters, she, uh, they were sending letters to Peter saying, thank you, all this is documented. Now, while this is going on, the Clintons had filed not one, but eventually three false FEC reports they didn't report all of the 1.6 million. They reported part of it. At first, 300,000 dollars, part 331,000, then 400,000, and eventually they were fined for it. Now, during the investigation, which led to uh, a charge of a felony uh, behavior on the part of the Clintons, uh, Dave Rosen was eventually identified as a person at fault. But he was acquitted. Dave Rosen was the person who allegedly had put together these reports for the Clintons, but his name wasn't on. Them. And so no one can really point to him as the eventual person at fault uh, during uh, the court process. So what happened was that Peter Paul claimed that Senator Clinton was actually, now Senator Clinton, was actually the person involved in putting together the gala. Hillary Clinton said, I had nothing to do with it. Her staff said they had nothing to do with it. Peter claimed that they did. Now there was a video that Peter said existed, but of course, folks, YouTube didn't exist at this point in time, right? YouTube is a creation only approximately just over two years old. That's about it, all right? This is an eight-year-old story, all right? So Peter, when he had become involved with the Clintons, had a habit of carrying his video camera around, a camera that was given to him by none other than Robin Leach, you know, of the lifestyles of the rich and famous, that same person, because Peter was in such rarefied air that he wanted to chronicle every bit of what he was doing with anybody. So now, of course, this video sits in the possession of the U.S. Attorney. It's not released until this year. And that video does have Senator Clinton on it in a conference call with 
Stan Lee, Peter Paul, and others, and mentioned that Kelly Craighead was uh, the op the uh, her communicative representative on the gala. So constant effort, and your outreach to all of these people that really this because I know I talked oh, with Cher, and uh, you know, she was just great. Just said you know she really was excited, <laughs> and I hadn't talked to her, so I, you had to have really done a good job selling it to her. Well, he tells me it's because it was promised to him that he'll be the next Secretary of State. <laughs> all right. So now. All of this has led to, first of all, Peter Paul filing a business fraud suit against the Clintons, which uh, wound up in court last Friday, oral arguments are being heard, and if the judges, the three California appellate court judges give the thumbs up, then Senator Clinton will have to be uh, brought in as a witness. The other uh, case, the other part of this case, is uh, Peter Paul's attempt to reopen the FEC uh, complaint and that's in the process as well. So you can say, okay, what is, what's the so what of all this? Well, the so what is this. Right now, we're in a YouTube society and accountability on the part of every presidential candidate is paramount. If that candidate has something that they have done, then it should be discussed and disclosed. But to date, this particular issue has been all but hidden by the mainstream media and not discussed. In fact, the AP was the first organization to pick up this part of the case. Of course, it was on 2020, I think in 2001, and in the past. It was on Salon in 2002. But what you read then is what occurred up to that point. There's been a lot of water under this bridge till now. And now Peter is, well, he's just painted as a three-time felon, and someone, when they hear that, they immediately, they don't listen, you know? Well, no, listen. Because a person can be uh, charged for felon for what Peter did with Castro or for filing false uh, campaign finance reports. There are a lot of reasons. Throw it away. Listen to the story. Now, what the Clintons should do is get this out in the open, tell their side of the story, and just basically, as we say, broom it, all right? But they should give the American people a chance to have all of the information put in front of them to make their own decision. We're in a YouTube society. All these videos are out all over the internet. And you have other presidential candidates that have really based their campaigns on something called authenticity. In other words, what they said today was consistent with what they said yesterday. What they do today is consistent with what they did yesterday. And if they did something wrong in the past, you know about it. That's, that's the upshot of all of this, that really is. Now you might ask, I think in the fair interest of fair disclosure, how I got involved in this. I was contacted directly by Peter Paul because when I was doing research on presidential money's coming in. I saw his name come up and he was listed as a felon. I've worked for four different politicians and I can tell you that if you don't do homework on someone and you just get the negative side of them, you're going to make a big mistake. So I immediately googled his name and I found out what was going on. I simply blogged it. He contacted me and said, okay, here's the story. And he gave it to me flat out. The good, the bad, and the ugly. But I might add, if you look at Peter Paul's wiki, Wikipedia description, it's really doctored. SourceForge is a better one. That's just an FYI for you. But the bottom line is that there are, if you look at this, it's really kaleidoscopic. There are a lot of negatives in it uh, from whatever point of view. It doesn't matter if you look at it from the point of view of Clinton versus the Paul, Mr. Peter Paul, or Peter Paul versus Clinton, or anybody involved. There's enough blame to go around, but a lot of you don't know about it. That's the importance of this. So in closing, at the end of this video, I'll give you a lot of stuff, a lot of links. Uh, a lot of uh, visuals for you to look at, do your own homework, and come to your own conclusions. Meanwhile, I'm going to continue to de-stress, but I'm getting a lot of work done out here. Later.